Yeah, that's a problem. Let's try to fix that. A couple months ago, I came across this tutorial by Alex Programmer DE on how to turn a spare Raspberry Pi 4 into a Minecraft server. Because why would you not want a Minecraft server? Look at all the cool things that are happening in the B-roll right now. But, I had to solve a couple problems to get to this point. And as you saw in the intro, the thing caught on fire. Not really. But the server would restart when it got too hot. And I just managed the problem by unplugging it, leaving it for 5 minutes, and then plugging it back in. And then that process looped every 15 minutes. Then, one day, after my friends complained at me enough, I threw this case together. And it was just a small heatsink and a fan. And, as you can see, it has a lot of problems. For one, it needs two separate power supplies. Two, it's just blatantly ugly. And three, it's probably not that much of a risk, but having cardboard near something that could get potentially hot isn't probably the best idea. So, I sat down one day and decided I was going to solve this problem. As you can see right now, I went through a ton of design iterations. Some involving Arduinos turning on fans and logging the data and SD cards and stuff like that. One of them, which I was only semi-serious about, was to strap these giant huge fans onto them and just have them blow all the time. But luckily, due to some flooding, one of my grandma's old computers got destroyed. Along with her basement and a lot of stuff and a lot of other people's stuff, so probably not luckily, but... She gave it to me, and I got to take it apart. And I got a heatsink out of it. But after seeing how beefy that heatsink was, I kind of abandoned those plans. Because I assumed I could just do it through passive cooling. But I decided to do some tests first. Before I did any of this testing, I had to measure, tap, and drill all the mounting holes, and then measure and peck out the hole for the temperature sensor. I then drilled some holes onto a piece of aluminum following the same pattern. Then, I did some testing. I threw together a quick circuit on an Arduino Uno that would take the temperature data from a DS18B20 temperature sensor and would display that information in both Fahrenheit and Celsius on a 0.96 inch OLED display. I then mounted the temperature sensor onto a Peltier junction and ran it at max. Until it got to around 253 degrees Fahrenheit, which was almost the max of the temperature sensor, and seemed to be the max of the Peltier junction. I then ran the exact same test, just with the two metal standoffs and the heatsink. This test ended with a final temperature of around 194 degrees Fahrenheit. That's almost a 60 degree difference with and without the heatsink. So I was confident I could cool this with just the heatsink. No fans required. The next part was assembling it. I've never used thermal components or anything like this before, so it was a fun new learning experience. The first thing I did is put some thermal paste onto the CPU of the Raspberry Pi. Then I built up the standoffs and put on the heatsink, putting thermal paste in between each junction. Then I panicked because I thought the thermal paste was going to fall off, and quickly threaded the screws and attached the Pi to the heatsink. I first over tightened it, bending the board, and then I under tightened it a little bit. Tested it to make sure I could still put in the temperature sensor, and everything went great and smoothly. That it was much easier than I expected it would be. I could have probably done a better job cleaning up the junctions, but for my first time, I think it was pretty good. Now, on to the disappointing part of this project. As you can see right now, there's kind of these four modules or programs. There's the Belana Archon, SCP, the actual monitor of what's going on, and then the really annoying Wi-Fi connect, which fails to connect to the Wi-Fi constantly for some reason, even though it is connected. I had originally planned to make another one of those that would just broadcast out the temperature every 30 seconds or something. And that's why I had originally drilled that hole. I totally forgot that the Pi had a built-in temperature sensor. But I spent a lot of time and I could just not figure out how to do it. But I guess I don't even really need to monitor the temperature, because I know it's going to be running fine. I'm a professional coder who can't figure this out. Given I only gave it like an hour of trying to figure it out. And the final optimization I did is plug it into Ethernet. So, this was a pretty fun project. It was a pretty easy project. The editing has taken longer than both the planning and designing and building process. But definitely check out Alex Programmer DE's tutorial on how to do this, I would definitely recommend making a server, it's fun. 
and you can just go into like Amazon and buy like the super chill tower or whatever it is that's like 80 bucks or something smaller if you want or make like a janky cardboard system and have your house burned down. My whole motto for the server was I didn't want to spend any money. That's why I made this. And I didn't spend any money on it. Not up front. That was all things I previously had. Make sure you feed the algorithm, like and subscribe and stuff. I kind of want my most popular video to be something I put a little bit of effort into, not something that took me 30 seconds, like this video that's popping up right now. But thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.